Live from the CBS Broadcast Center in New York City, this is CBS 2 News. They were quite simply assassinated. Two city police officers ambushed their cruiser's window blown away by a gunman apparently seeking revenge. It is an attack on all of us. There's blood on many hands tonight. First gunshots in Baltimore, then gunshots in Brooklyn before the suspect is wheeled away. Tonight, the chilling photos from social media, the heartbreak. It's a time of great emotion, and great passion. And the hope. And we must all come together to support these families. Good evening, I'm Cindy Hsu. A city in mourning as new information emerges about the deadly police ambush. A silent salute outside Woolhull Hospital tonight as the officers' bodies were carried away. Sources say the gunman seen in this video was upset about the death of Eric Garner. It's also believed the suspect posted disturbing messages and photos on Instagram before the shooting. We have team coverage of the tragedy and the investigation. Let's begin with CBS 2's Matt Kozar, live outside Woolhull Hospital. Matt? Cindy, inside the hospital, we saw officers crying and hugging each other. We also saw an emotional police commissioner who said that these two cops were targeted and assassinated because of their uniform. A farewell salute to 40-year-old officer Rafael Ramos and 32-year-old officer Wen Jin Lu as their bodies left Woodhull Hospital. Police say a lone gunman ambushed the officers Saturday afternoon outside of the Tompkins houses, a high crime area. They were on a special crime reduction patrol because of complaints in the neighborhood. He took a shooting stance on the passenger side and fired the weapon, his weapon several times through the front passenger window striking both officers in the head. Investigators say officers chased the shooter, 28-year-old Ishmael Brinsley, who disappeared into the Myrtle Avenue subway station. While on the platform, Brinsley shot himself in the head, took his own life. Outside of the hospital tonight, the Patrolman's Benevolent Association President Patrick Lynch hurled harsh words at Mayor Bill de Blasio. There's blood on many hands tonight. Those that incited violence on the street under the guise of protest, that blood on the hands starts on the steps of City Hall in the office of the mayor. The mayor responded with this statement. It's unfortunate that in a time of great tragedy, some would resort to irresponsible, overheated rhetoric that angers and divides people. The president is weighing in, issuing a statement saying he condemns the murder of these two police officers. Now, sources are telling us that NYPD officers are now being warned to be aware of their security both on and off the job. Reporting live from bed Brooklyn, Matt Kozar, CBS 2 News. Matt, thank you. And hearts are heavy at the 84th precinct where the two officers worked. CBS 2's Dave Carlin is live in downtown Brooklyn with that part of the story. Dave? Cindy, remembering the murdered heroes, this is a station house in mourning. We'll never forget the two young men who lost their lives today. The two officers, brothers and sisters in blue at the 84th Precinct Station House, brought this flag to half-staff. It waved in darkness above these flowers, left near the front door by members of this community the two men pledged to protect. It, it really just makes me confused. It's uncalled for, really. Officer Ramos had his 40th birthday on December 12th. He had been a school safety officer, then transitioned to this job those who knew him said he loved, stationed with the 84th Precinct. He leaves behind his wife and 13-year-old son. We met the wife of Officer Ramos. We met his 13-year-old son who couldn't comprehend what had happened to his father. Officer Liu was married just two months ago. He was a seven-year veteran of the force. They were on duty, in uniform, and inside their marked critical response vehicle. Police Commissioner Bratton reacted to officer concerns about safety on the streets, saying the department's 35,000 officers will soon be getting new technology that would allow the immediate sending of photos and warnings to the field. These specially outfitted tablets and laptops will go to the officers. The technology uh, is coming. 
and here's an example of, of how it's going to benefit the safety of our offices. And then I met with the, uh, the officers from the 8-4 precinct, the partner officers of the two deceased officers. It's not easy. Not easy at all. And uh, I've, I've dealt with this too many times over 44 years. You always hope that you're never going to experience it again. The purple and black memorial bunting is expected to be installed on this station house within the next 24 hours. Live in downtown Brooklyn, Dave Carlin, CBS 2 News. Dave, thank you. Now to the suspect who first opened fire in Baltimore before traveling to Brooklyn. CBS 2's Steve Langford continues our team coverage from Bedford-Stuyvesant. New technology we've just heard about would have been critical today. As police from out of state tried to alert the NYPD, the suspect appears to have left a trail of warning signs. 28-year-old Ismael Abdullah Brinsley began his day, according to police in Maryland, where he shot his ex-girlfriend. She is expected to survive. Baltimore County detectives later received information from the victim's mother that Brinsley was posting on the victim's Instagram account. Police are now taking a close look at those postings. One included a picture of a handgun and read in part, quote, I'm putting wings on pigs today. They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs, end of quote. Another picture showed what appeared to be blood on a pair of jeans and references to Brooklyn. Police in Baltimore tried to warn the NYPD. At approximately 2.45 this afternoon, Baltimore authorities sent a fax, a warning flyer, a wanted flyer to the NYPD and other agencies. Tragically, this was essentially at the same time as our officers were being ambushed and murdered by Brinsley. Brinsley is no stranger to the police. Criminal records show a history of arrests for various charges in Georgia, including robbery, shoplifting, carrying a concealed weapon, disorderly conduct, and obstruction of a law enforcement officer. Commissioner Bratton says his last known address was in Georgia, but he does have ties to New York. There's no indicating that Brinsley has any ties to overseas terror. Police are still investigating any possible gang or domestic ties. In Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, Steve Langford, CBS 2 News. Governor Cuomo is reacting to the deadly shooting, saying this act of violence is the opposite of what New York is. United States Attorney General Eric Holder released a statement condemning the shooting, saying this was an unspeakable act of barbarism. And I was deeply saddened to hear of the loss of these two brave officers in the line of duty. And in a tweet, former Governor George Pataki said, sickened by these barbaric acts, which sadly are a predictable outcome of divisive anti-cop rhetoric of Eric Holder and Mayor de Blasio. The Reverend Al Sharpton has also released a statement. It says in part, I have spoken to the Garner family and we are outraged by the early reports of the police killed in Brooklyn today. Any use of the names of Eric Garner and Michael Brown in connection with any violence or killing of police is reprehensible and against the pursuit of justice in both cases. Now, the last New York City police officer killed in the line of duty was police officer Dennis Guerra. He died on April 9th while responding to a fire on Coney Island, Brooklyn. The 38-year-old officer and his partner were overcome by smoke after getting off an elevator on the 13th floor. Guerra died from his injuries three days later. And it turns out the fire had been intentionally set. In October, a man with a hatchet attacked four rookie officers on a street in Queens. One officer was critically injured. The attacker, Zale Thompson, was shot and killed by police. Police Commissioner Bratton said he was a self-radicalized convert to Islam, and Bratton called it a terrorist act. Our coverage of the deadly police ambush continues on our website, where you can watch the mayor's news conference, view photos, and post condolences. Just go to cbsnewyork.com.